Many years ago, I noticed a sign on a colleague's office wall which declared there's no such thing as an educational emergency. I've reused and recycled that phrase many a time, encouraging colleagues to keep our work in perspective, to take the time needed to think that through plans, to engage with others, to allow ourselves to be creative. Many have quoted this phrase back to me in recent weeks with a wry smile and a raised eyebrow. This has been a quite extraordinary semester. Ambitions at the start of 2020 of inspiring learning, enthusing our students to engage with our courses, to share our passion for our subjects, were gradually and then dramatically overtaken by the spread of coronavirus. First, the disruption to partner institutions in China, and then the wholesale closure of our own campuses for us in, for us in Scotland, Dubai and Malaysia. The key thing with this meme though, which you've no doubt seen doing the rounds, is that the horse at the end is still standing. We have somehow made it through. Students were supported, exams were delivered, staff were still supporting each other. To get there though, we rallied together. We spent long days and nights dashing to prepare, print, distribute resources for our students and for our colleagues, making sure they had as much support as possible at their fingertips before the doors to our offices and teaching spaces were closed. And the pace has, if anything, continued to increase. Across institutions, we've had to make rapid and hugely challenging decisions about assessment. We've had to learn new skills in supporting our students online, adapt to working remotely. And all that amidst the wider challenges of juggling our lives turned upside down. So your invitation to today to pause and reflect on key learning from this period was both welcome and a bit daunting. What I present here is not so much reflection as a quick glance out of the window of a speeding train trying to pull into focus some of the key features of the landscape. So let me share with you what's currently in focus. The features that stand out for better and for worse at this point in the journey. I'll offer three snapshots of learning in lockdown that I would like us to hang on to as our journey continues, and three that I would caution about keeping on display. First then, is perhaps the most striking and powerful positive feature of this landscape. In that hurried period of transition, and then our gradual slide into some sort of new normal, there's been a genuine focus on compassion and care for students and for colleagues. That's seen in our everyday interactions and in the high level decisions being taken across the institution. And we academic year, the interactions that make our community tick, the student led awards, the post exam celebrations, the graduations, and at a smaller scale, those informal corridor conversations, the cup of coffee shared with a colleague. Secondly, I'd like to hang on to the creativity in pedagogy and practice that's come to the fore. We have had to work across boundaries. We've formed new teams to get things done. And we've worked together to find solutions to some hugely challenging pedagogic conundrums around how we're going to deliver labs and studio experiences, field trips and placements in a context of physical distancing and varying degrees of lockdown. And thirdly, the pace of change. We've seen shifts in practice that would, under normal circumstances, have taken years. While we may want to slow that pace just a little, we won't now be able to stand back and say, oh, it can't be done or it will take too long, but those boundaries can't be broken. We know we can work differently. We can pull together to make good change happen and we must continue to do so. So what then are the snapshots from lockdown learning that we may want to reframe and look at afresh? 
Firstly, I'd urge caution at being seduced by the offers of quick technological fixes that are currently doing the rounds. The offers to help you pivot online, the illusion that if only you had more features on your VLE, higher spec audiovisual resources, a smarter looking interface, then all would be fine. Yes, some of these things would be nice to have, but start from what you and your students are comfortable with. Focus on the pedagogy and being authentically you in your teaching practice. It's your passion for your subject, your clarity of engagement that will inspire student learning, whatever tech is or isn't involved. And secondly, I'd be wary of becoming too focused on physical space as the focus of our discussions around disruption. Yes, it's vital that we bring life, laughter and learning back to our campuses as soon as possible. They matter deeply to shaping how we interact, how we learn, who we are as a, as a learning community. But other disruptions also matter. In particular, disruption to our students' learning journeys. Returning and new students are going to need considerable help and support to adjust to our new normal and the uncertainty that's inherent in it. They'll need support not just through extended summer inductions, but over the course of the year. So when we're looking at our pedagogy, we need to think not just about whether it's online or makes use of campus space, but how it's paced, how it builds confidence, how it supports students to feel they belong, however challenging their recent learning journey has been. And finally, I'd issue a word of caution about slipping into pandemic platitudes. You'll have noticed them. The emails that start with a note of care and inquire about your family's health and then proceed to ask you to do something more and set ridiculous deadlines. We've also become adept at deflecting the questions of care. We'll say we're fine, even if the kids are going bananas in the room next door, homeschooling is a disaster and you simply can't face another online meeting. Expressions of care, kindness and well-being are vital but they need to be authentic and backed up by practical support and changes in how we do things. Can we take the pressure off colleagues by working effectively in course teams, by team teaching, by pooling resources and sharing skills? Can we relook at assessment, our approach to learning in ways that extend compassion into practical, identifiable changes in our teaching and assessment practice? At Herrick Watt, we've introduced the idea of responsive blended learning as the guiding approach for the new academic year. It aims to be responsive to the challenges posed by the global pandemic in three ways. To the uncertainty around physical space and the need to respond to whatever mix of face-to-face -face and online engagement is pragmatically possible and pedagogically desirable. Responsive to those disrupted learning journeys and the need to extend the support we offer students over the summer and throughout the coming academic year. This is disruption that will have been experienced differently and to greater disadvantage by some more than others. They will need our support. And to the need for expressions of well-being and care to be practically backed up by action. How we shape our teaching and assessment offer and how we support our students and our colleagues will need to change. So, as we move out of emergency mode and into an altered university campus, new blended ways of teaching and learning, I'd urge you to pause for just a moment and think about the snapshots of kindness and support, the inclusive and care-centred ways of working that have made a difference to you over the last few months and hold on to them, develop them and share them as we move forward into whatever the next academic year may bring. <laughs>